So by now, I'm sure that a majority of you guys out there have seen the Acolyte trailer by, of course, showrunner and director Leslie Hedlund, a series that is also backed and created by Kathleen Kennedy 110%, and already this series is getting ratioed to the degree that we have never seen before on the official Star Wars, of course, channel when it comes to their movies, their shows. I really don't believe that we've seen anything like this to the point where so many fans are beginning to really speak their minds out in the open against Star Wars against, of course, what Kathleen Kennedy is pushing and exactly what's been going on with this series at an all-time low. Now, one thing about all of this is that we know that The Acolyte is one show in particular that really is going to break the rules of Star Wars. Leslie Headland has been very open and clear about that, and also it's going to be a series that will divert from George Lucas's vision. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future updates. You can also follow me at Mike Zero One. I thank you all so very much for the great and kind support. Now, I'm a little shocked that the Acolyte trailer is getting so many dislikes across the board. It doesn't matter where it was, you know, featured on the internet, anywhere you go it's getting a lot of dislikes regardless. And this has a lot to do with the presentation of the trailer, what they're trying to do with sending the message, as well as what Leslie Headland has said numerous times, that this show in its own way, of course, in isolation, is really going to be used as a way to detached from the burden of George Lucas. And we all have to remember what she said about George in one of the podcasts like months ago where she said, if you believe that George Lucas is the key to Star Wars, then you're a misogynist. That that is the misogyny and that's the problem. That's all you need to really know about Leslie Headland And also who she used to be a personal assistant for. I don't think I have to repeat who exactly that is up to the upteenth time. But what's interesting about this with the Acolyte director and showrunner Leslie Headland already beginning to defend her Star Wars series after the backlash from Star Wars fans based on the reception of the trailer, one major development has much to do with Headland and her response to the entire situation where she delivered the following to everyone. As a director, I think it was very important that we focused on diversity in this series. I mean, this is going to be the very first Star Wars series not only set in a time that doesn't need to connect to George's Star Wars, but also this is the first series of its kind for this franchise that properly promotes diversity at its finest. Of course, along with that, you are always going to get loud, biased opinions from fans who feel entitled about this franchise as if it belongs to them. So far, I have been very honored to use this show as an inspiration from the many talented directors and writers of Star Wars like J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson, who really perfected the sequels. As much as I have noticed fans hold a certain criticism about those films, I think they are really in the minority. I have seen nothing but great things about the reception for the sequels. I took so much inspiration, especially from The Last Jedi's Ryan Johnson. I think you are going to see some really surprising elements of his film in this series. And I'm also a huge fan of the EU and the Old Republic. And what better way to cherry pick from those story elements as well to fit a new way of storytelling with these new tales. Whatever you think The Acolyte is, well, it just isn't. I don't think anyone will ever guess what this series truly is about before it releases. I think that's what Ryan Johnson perfected with The Last Jedi, since nobody knew going in what they were in for with that film. Like I said earlier, you will always have naysayers that don't want to support your vision. That's just inevitable, and I'm beginning to already notice that, you know, what I don't care, I don't care if you like or dislike the Acolyte. I think the ones that support this thing are the true fans that are willing to adapt to change and to the modern way of storytelling in this industry. Both I and Kathleen Kennedy agreed this was going to be a series full of bold decisions, much like what JJ and especially Ryan did with their films. And I'm hoping I can emulate the same technique in a more successful fashion than what anyone dreamed of. Let me just say one thing about Leslie. I think that what she's getting at is she wants to basically divide fans or whatever fans are left at this point to divide those fans further. And that's basically what she's getting at. Do we all not remember the famous Ryan Johnson interview, or should I say the infamous Ryan Johnson interview where he says he likes to divide fans when it comes to movies? I mean, this is another prime example of who she's looking up to. She's looking up to Ryan Johnson of The Last Jedi. The very sole person that 
literally just destroyed Star Wars, you know, right in front of us back in 2017, leading into 2018, all right? That was the very film that really tarnished the brand right then and there. You know, The Force Awakens, I think, yes, we saw a little bit of a, you know, shadow of what was about to loom with Disney Star Wars there, but fans still felt that there was a gateway to opportunities that it could have took off with Episode Eight afterwards. Unfortunately, it didn't end up being like that, but moving onwards, she goes on to conclude, This show is for those who want to support a series that not only opens a gateway to different people holding different backgrounds, but also it's a series that will reach a wider audience than all the other shows that came before this. I mean, we are finally done and over with the Skywalkers, that is no more, and if fans have a problem with our treatment of this series, they can simply just not watch it and stick to what they like. Fandom culture is very toxic, and it's something I have always noticed with Star Wars. I mean, since the sequels, I think it's only, it only has gotten worse because a core part of his audience, or this audience, is seemingly afraid of accepting diversity in the promotion of powerful female roles in both film and television. I think this will be the very first of its kind, where the naysayers believe they know what they are talking about, only to find out that they were wrong. And hey, that's going to be a good thing in the end. So, here we have it, Leslie Headland, Ryan Johnson 2.0 as far as I'm concerned. When you look at the Acolyte, and I'm going to say this right here, right now, I always call it the Hackalite because this really is a show that is not Star Wars, it's not true Star Wars, it's a mockery of what it once was before Disney took over back in 2012. And we all know, going in, that Leslie Headland, from the very start, right from the get-go, wanted to destroy George Lucas' Star Wars. And speaking about George Lucas, there's a lot of controversy surrounding him right now, too. I'll touch on that a little bit later. But when you look at this in isolation, when you just look at the trailer, I'm not saying the trailer is like an atrocity to the point where it's like the worst thing that you've ever seen, but you can see that it's really not surprising at all. It's not building up hype, it's not shocking, it's not artistic really. Sure, the cinematography may look good, but the way the dialogue is presented, the way it's actually pushing the message is very visible, and that's more visible now when you line things up with what Leslie Headland is saying about the Acolyte series. So again, this is all something that Kathleen Kennedy and Leslie Headland are pushing with the Acolyte. They're modeling this show after Ryan Johnson's The Last Jedi because of how it's going to make bold decisions, breaking the rules of Star Wars, shifting away from traditions, and doing things that are going to divide whatever fans are left. That's why I call this The Last Jedi 2.0 or The Hackalite. So overall, again, I think we're going to see another big spark when it comes to Star Wars, and not in a good way, by June 4th. This is definitely going to be 2017 all over again as far as I th see things. So I would love to hear what you all have to say about everything related to the Acolyte and Leslie Headland. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel, and I will catch you guys later. Yeah.